Hey everyone, Sir Jellybean here, and we are back with Court Arms Gates for Osfran, and once again we are here with the German Army Conquest Review. So, I haven't done this for about a year and a half, it's now 2024. We're doing a full review, and as you can see, I've got a mod to just give me unlimited resources, so I've unlocked everything. So we're going to go through manpower, the actual population cap cost of each unit, i.e. how much you can bring of said unit, because that's something you can't normally see. We're also going to go into what the units bring, their uses in my opinion, and what is good and what is not. We're basically just going to go from the top of the research tree down to the bottom, as you can see, everything is unlocked. So we can go through everything 100%. So we'll jump straight into it. So first we have the officer. This is Lieutenant here. And you know, here what it's called, Lieutenant. Officers are pretty good. Obviously people know they bring binoculars and increased vision. They can be used for reconnaissance. They also have a higher population cap in capture zones. So if you have an officer, the cast is about equivalent of four or five men. So they can be useful for that. They're more, in my opinion, useful for, you know, if you want to play realistically and bring an officer like I do in my um, Strap Battalion campaign. But, you know, they're not a mage unit, but for 60 manpower and 2 points, they do have their uses. They come with, like, an SMG, a couple of grenades, and a shovel. Yeah, field spatter, as you can see there. But, you know, not a bad pick, but not necessary. But if you can fit one in, always worth bringing, and also very fun. And they're fairly elite, you know, the HP and skill-wise. Next, we have the command squad. Command squad, in my opinion, is not really worth it over the officer. You get just the officer with an extra few infantrymen. I don't think it's worth it for the 8 population cap, especially early game. You're better off just going, you know, with the officer, in my opinion. They're not bad, but they're nothing elite. So, yeah, I would skip over the command squad. They're not bad for 86 points. The number one, the Kuba Wagon command squad comes with a medic. That's far better. That's not bad if you want to bring a medic and an officer and kind of fit them in. It's the same manpower, population cap, as the command squad, but it's 135 manpower. Obviously, they come with rifles. Well, rifle, a couple of SMGs, and medical have a pistol. It's not a bad thing, but obviously that will not last long. So, I, you know, once again, it's a skip for me. But you do have to unlock these on the research tree if we look up here. The command squads do unlock the calling stages and the defense stages, so obviously there is that use of them, and obviously the calling stages as well, which have their uses. Next we have the SD you know, half track with the MG, I believe it's the MG34 on it, the belt. This comes with a full complement. You've obviously got the crew for the half track, you've got your officer, you've got your feeble wear, your rifleman, and your medic. That's not bad for 12 manpower, and the, the half track, in my opinion, is pretty good. The half track by itself is normally about five or six manpower, so it's not bad. It's your basic variant though with just one MG at the front, none at the back, but still pretty decent. I actually quite like this command squad. I definitely think it's worth bringing, especially with the medic. Jump the medic and officer out as soon as you get it. And for 12 population cap and 335 manpower, that is pricey. But if you think that it's got a very good multi-role squad later in the uh, campaign where you've got more choices, bit more manpower and more population, to, you know, more um, calling waves to fill, definitely I think it's a good call. And obviously the half track can tell things like artillery and anti-tank guns, which is fantastic. Next, we get on to the infantry. Now, we start here with the Ostrooper. Ostrooper, obviously, uh, foreign recruited soldiers, mainly from areas like Ukraine, well, modern day Ukraine, and things like that. But obviously, they come from other countries. They're, they're poor. So, they're 10 population cap and 66 manpower. Now, I will say this they come with no field spatters to dig in. Obviously, the commander does there. You can see his. They don't come with, I think they come with a few frag grenades. They only have rifles. They have low health. As you can see here, he's 200 HP. They're 150 HP, 75 stamina, and low skill set. The garbage, but the cheap. You can bring, for instance, they can bring a lot for you know in your first wave, which is normally sixty and population cap. You can bring ten squads for what three hundred and thirty-six manpower. So for one manpower more, you can bring sixty men over a command squad. They have the uses. They won't last long. They're not particularly accurate, but they're a great kind of meat shield force. And yeah, I actually I do value them as cheap and efficient. If you just need some men to hold an objective or you're low on manpower, I think the Ostrupa is not a bad call. And on the research tree, if you if we go down to the infantry, um, they are here. As you can see, Ostroop and Strap Battalion Luff, Luff Rifle are very easy to get through, and they're very cheap and efficient, and they cost about one research point each. Next, we have the Strap Battalion. As you know, I've been playing the full cut conquest with these guys. I actually quite like these guys. Now, they do come with three SMG guys, obviously one being decent, the other one's being standard convicts. They're the same as the Ostroop when it comes to skills. Um, they come with frags, no shovels either, no M MGs, but they come with quite a large squad. As you can see, compared to them, they have one extra man. They're also 10 population cap. The squad is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's that is 9. So you get one extra man. There's 76 manpower, so 10 more. They're actually half decent. I've done pretty well this drop of time. They obviously won't beat elite infantry, but the fact that you get a couple of SMG guys as well makes them useful. It's fun. Obviously, I've been playing a strap of time playthrough. They've been fun to use. Um, sorry, I keep throwing the units around. I don't need to stop that. Um, I would just simply say... If you use them, they're good to use in numbers. They're good as meat shields. You can arm them up, but don't expect them to be elite infantry. And a single maxim will tear through a squad very quickly. So, you know, they're extra squishy. But they have their place. They're cheap. They're efficient for what they cost. 
And if you just want cheap infantry to support some armored units or hold some objectives, they're not bad. Next, you have the Luftwaffe Rifle Squad. Now, these guys are better, as you can see. You've got your standard squad leader, you've got your assistant. They are low health wise. Even the squad leader is actually low health. If you look at the Strath Battalion, they actually have a full thing. He's pretty low health on everything, but they have one major key objective thing over the others. They have an MG13. So they do have a light machine gun. They also come with field spatten so they can dig in. So they're more like actual infantry. These guys are actually, I believe, in real life, their job is to defend the airfields. Think a bit like the RAF regiment, but far less trained because it's World War II. But the Luftwaffe had their own squads. The 10 manpower, as you can see, they're also a 10 man squad. They come with an MG, the 95 manpower, and they also have field spatten. Not a bad call. I haven't used them personally, but if you go down that route for cheap infantry, they're the better class of cheap infantry. So I think they're good for that. So yeah, I think that they have their place in the battlefield, but obviously don't expect them to take on elite infantry or anything like that, but good defensively. Next, you have the Session Squad. Now, these are your standard infantry. We're just going to look here. These are kind of your first available squads. These aren't too bad. As you can see, they don't come with an MG, but their basic skill set is 200 HP, 125 manpower, uh, stamina, should I say. Population cap, they're, they're 18, so they're a lot more than your cheap infantry. But they obviously are far better. They come with field spot and they come with the grenades. I do believe you get a couple of anti-tank grenades as well, the squad leader. They're pretty decent, but there's no MG there. Great filler unit. 74 manpower, so cheap, actually cheaper than a Strapatine squad. Not a bad call at all. I like them. And obviously they have better skill set. Like if we, we didn't actually check the love off a rifle squad, but they also have low skills, whereas the success rungs, you start actually getting to infantry. We have you know level three for rifle. Or whatever for instance the female are a level three in the smg skill and the pistol skill so they're actually efficient these will take on regular forces these are your standard infantry these are fantastic definitely a call in definitely good you can stay with them for the first few battles of um, conquest easily uh yeah and bad things you don't get an mg but not a major issue next we have the orc is it elf clara squad it's recon squad it's the german recon squad these are actually really good as you look at these guys 150 225 manpower uh, stamina so for 12 population cover 82 manpower, you get six men. One has an MG, by the way. It's an MG34 with a drum. You basically get some really skilled, fairly skilled guys with great stamina. And because the recon, they get extra 20% vision and they have stealth. It doesn't say it in, I don't think it says it actually on the unit, but they get like a stealth bonus in things like bushes and in hiding. So recon is very good. I don't tend to use recon enough, but they're a very good squad and they're a small elite squad. So yeah, the recon squad is a, it's a go for me. Definitely. Now, rifle squad. This is where we get to the meat of the German infantry. These are kind of like your standard Gelenden Diaz. Obviously, it's a 10-man squad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You have your standard sergeant with your SMG. You know, he's got your base skills. You've also got... Everyone has 200 HP and 125 stamina. They all have decent skill set. They also come with an MG34 belt, which is, I think, it's 150 rounds. That's fantastic. You also have an ammo bearer with ammunition. Uh, you have an MG assist and an ammo bearer, which is fantastic. You also get frag grenades and anti-tank grenades in the squad. They all have field spatten so they can dig in. These are your first kind of top troops. Obviously, the 20 population cap, 190 manpower, but the rifle squad is, you know, you can use them for the entire campaign. You can serve from the start to the finish and be good against basically everything. They won't beat like your top tier Soviet stuff in US veteran rifle squads and things like that, but they're still good and they bring a lot of firepower. They're efficient and they have good health. So yeah, the rifle squad is a definite take. It should be the core of your force. Next are the Pioneer Squad. Now, this is a mix for some people, as you can see. It has 12 men in, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 man squad. 24 population cap, 192 manpower. Now, here's the thing they come with a crap ton of everything. So, you've got your standard guy, the 200 HP, 125 stamina. As you can see, standard stats are similar. Now, you've got things like here. He has a Gavir. Now, you don't get that in the rifle squad, I don't believe. You don't get a Gavir. These are carabiners. He straight away has a semi automatic rifle, right? And then you get to things like a flamethrower in the squad. You also get an anti-tank rifle and an MG-34 belt. So you get um, you get anti-tank, you get flamethrowers, you get satchel charges, like TNT kind of things. You get um, even wire cutters, I believe, in the squad. You get frag grenades, you also get decent infantry, and you get a 12-man team. They're a fantastic all-round squad at the start. F the fact that you know, Soviet armors and American armors very like the start, like the Germans, the AT rifle will still rip through them. The flamethrower is absolutely brutal for clearing objectives and burning through buildings pioneer squad's amazing and if you look on the research tree it is just after the session squads so you can go down the pioneer line which leads to the goliaths as well so i do like the pioneer and the pioneer squad is a top tier pick i i did it in my i think it was conquest enhanced i went with the pioneers everyone was like do it do it i was like no they're actually fantastic so the pioneers is a definite go ahead the only thing is at 24 pop cap you can only fit about two in your first initial wave 
so you've got to look after them a bit more but you do get a few more infantry so actually population cap wise pound for pound there is was the rifle squad they are a bit pricey though next you have the motorized uh right re recon squad or the old is it of clara squad whatever it is recon squad problem is it's only a four-man squad when you bring it like this i'd say go for the standard one i don't really rate this thing with the md34 it won't last long it's eight population cap 140 just get the standard recon squad far better Motorized Rifle Squad, as you can see, it's a very big squad, also comes with 18 infantry. You get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Obviously, one will be the driver. You get the transport truck, which is the Opal Blitz, that won't last long. The main thing is that you get an AT rifle, which kind of throws you off. The thing is, though, it's 28 manpower, 230 population cap. Either go for a Pioneer Squad or just bring a German Rifle Squad. Do not bring, obviously, you get two MGs which is pretty strong, but don't don't bring them if they're rapid assault force. If they're in half tracks, maybe, but the, the Opal Blitz just gets murdered. I'm not a fan of the motorized rifle squad, but I can see its uses, but I personally just think it's overpriced for what it is. I think you're far better going with the standard rifle squad or a Pioneer squad. Next, you have the Armoured Recon squad. Now, this is weird, because obviously Armoured Recon, but they bring, obviously, dual MGs. They bring a lot of ammo. You've got um, decent stats and everything. But it's not it's now c so it has two mgs as an mg i believe it's an mg34 on the back and it's then another mg34 the drum one on the back so you get two mgs and a half track i don't mind this for a recon squad if you've gone down the recon line and you really want the half track i think it's a good call i've never used it personally but for 26 man pound 245 man, 245 man pound but 26 pop cap a bit pricey but you know it's kind of a cool idea if you're doing a mechanized play through a full kind of german it'd be a, pa be a panzer division yeah something like that or like an elite SS force, I guess it'd be cool to bring. But it kind of, uh, I think recon squads themselves are better just to have to split them up and use them. But it's cool for the flavour. Next we have the armoured rifle squad. Obviously this is a, an actual mechanised stuff. You've got the LC, two MGs. You get two MGs in the squad, which is fantastic. You don't get any AT, but you get a lot of firepower. I don't think they get any semi-automatic rifles in this squad. I don't believe so, actually. One sec, what's there? What's lingering there? We do, we get a Gavir 41 there. So you do get some semi-automatic firepower. But, you know, a lot of firepower, you get, I believe you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 men. Obviously, one will have to drive the half-track, and two will have to man the guns if you want full kind of a thing. So that knocks you down by three. Really, two of those, the back one's not as important. But, yeah, it's not bad if you want to do, like, a mechanised force. It's 28 manpower, 270 unit, uh, 270 manpower, 28 population cap. Keep messing up. But, obviously, you could bring more grenadiers, I guess. But having the half-track is pretty good, and a bit of extra manpower. Obviously, the dual MGs is very effective. But yeah, it's quite a cool bring for the mechanized force. Obviously, it's easy on the chart. If you go down the mechanized line, you can get to the armored rifle squad quite easy. But in my opinion, you should be using the research to go to the elite infantry more because that will benefit you in the long run. Next, we have the armored panzer, armored panzer pioneer squad. Obviously, you get dual, you know, just one MG. You get your flamethrower there. You obviously get things like your semi-automatic rifle, your gear. You get your satchel chargers as always. It's basically a pioneer squad, but armed up. You get 12 minute, I believe. Is it 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But only one MG in this squad. In my opinion, i just go for a standard Pioneer squad. If you're really desperate for the half track, though, definitely bring it. But it's 28 man power and 285. 20, 285 man power, 285 man power, 28 population gap. I'm going to keep balls in that up all day. But still pretty cool. But I would say go for the Pioneer squad personally. I think it's more bang for your buck. Here, though, we have something interesting. We have the Goliath team. So, Four man squad, you're basically your standard rifleman, standard rifleman skills, but you get the Goliath. Now, this thing is an absolute beast. Hull Armor 5 is light, but this one is, you know, it's like a, like a, I can't remember how much actual explosives in it. It's like, is it about 10 kilo or something stupid? They're very powerful. They will take out buildings, tanks, anything that gets hit like by a Goliath dies. It's eight population cap and 125 manpower, and it's quite easy to get to. I haven't used them in my campaigns yet, but yeah, it's definitely, yeah, they're fantastic. And obviously, you have the Goliath. 303b which has whole armor 10 so it's a bit more armored and it's the same squad yeah goliaths are both a win eight population caps nothing bring a couple of them you use it as a pioneer siege force demolish them fantastic ah the blur division the spaniards my personal favorite i use these in my constant hunts v2 campaign these are actually spanish foreign fighters did the video on them check it out it's pretty decent back in the day should i say and yeah you so you get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten man squad they cost 20 Population cap, 184 manpower. Now, you might think, eh, it's a bit more expensive than the rifle squad. Let's just have a look at the stats. 335 on the sergeant, 300 stamina. As you can see, bumped upon all the stats by one. 
standard soldier 375 300 375 300 as you can see the man the health and the stamina is fantastic the blood division are fantastic they get frag grenades they get um entrenchment tools uh, your field spot and they get anti-tank grenades and they also believe it is an mg34 belt which is fantastic do they have any they get two gavirs as well as you can see so two semi-automatic rifles and you get the mp41 which i like personally over the other mp so this is fantastic and if you look at the research tree the blur division is just off there now they are a dead end they're fantastic you can use them all throughout the game they are elite infantry blur division is 100 percent yes and it's cheap on the population cap they're definitely in my opinion pound for pound the best troops in the game if anyone disagrees you're a damn traitor to the spaniards but they're fantastic 100 percent for the blur division do a campaign with them you will not regret it you also use them in that mission is it legend of krasny ball true story spanish blur division awesome veteran rifle squad these guys aren't too bad as you can see on the tree they're just off to the right if you need them for the Gross Deutschlands or the Brandenburgers. They're basically rifle squads, but with better, better health and better thing. Not as good as the, you know your Blur Division. 20 population cap, 186 manpower, 189 manpower. You get one MG. I believe you get two semi-auto... You get three semi-automatic rifles. Okay, that's pretty good. So you are actually able to kind of bring quite a bit of firepower with them. They're not bad if you're going down that Brandenburger line. They're definitely worth the points. Not as good as the Blur Division, but they do bring you know their own flavour. They do come with an MG34 belt as well. So yeah, definitely useful, but still not as good as Blur Division. But they lead, they're not a dead end in the research tree, so they lead on something better. But yeah, I'd say the right rifle squad, because the population cap's the same. If you've got the manpower, definitely upgrade to them. You basically get an upgraded soldier straight out of the bat, and then you can just use them and keep upgrading them. You know, if you get more veterancy for them through the battles. Jaeger squad. Now these guys are cool. So it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 man squad. They're basically an SMG squad. Uh, they have good um, HP on the commander. As you can see, 300 HP, 200 stamina. So they are very strong. They also come with an MG, I believe it is, belt as well. MG42 belt. So it's very powerful. Having that many SMGs is fantastic. Then you've got a couple of uh, rifles of sport. These guys are fantastic for your urban battles. 20 population cap, 188 manpower. Always bring a Jaeger squad. Get them set up in good choke points or kind of narrow corridors. They'll absolutely shred. Even the mighty PPSH struggles against the SMG squad just because you're bringing as many SMGs as the Soviets. So it's always useful to have one of these squads. I do like them. It's a definite win. Next we have the Gerber Jaeger squads. Now these are kind of elite in the sense of they're fantastic. 335 HP, 300 stamina. Lots of hate, health, lots of stamina. They have good skills. They are masters of long range combat. That's what they specialize in. They're very good with rifle skill. They obviously come with the MG34 belt. But they are great. Probably some of the best like long range. They specialize in basically like being your kind of elite long range guys. 20 population cap, 226 manpower. Good health, good stamina. As you can see, stamina is 300 as well. These guys are fantastic, in my opinion. There's a good skirmisher force. I do like them. And on the tree, you need to go through the Gerber Jaeger squad to get to the Fulsham Jaeger. So, yeah, they're a good call. Uh, I do like them. Good for kind of like why you're wasting, waiting for Fulsham Jaegers and fair on the points. The Brandenburgers. Now, these guys were elite in real life. These were foreign volunteers that were kind of like infiltration specialists. Awesome. I actually did a video on them. Fantastic unit. You get to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 man squad. As you can see, they come with 375 HP, 300 stamina. That's kind of the elite mark. They've got very good skill set. They come with dual MG42s with the drums. So that's a hell of a lot of firepower. They also come with um, just standard uh, carbines, but you also get two SMG troops. These are fantastic. They're a dead end on the line here, though. They're the end of this line. I do like the Brandenburgers. The 20 population cap, 268 manpower. Very cost effective. Very good. Yeah, Brandenburgers are a win. If you want some elite troops that are very mobile, very tough, very cool, and they come with that cool camo kit, as you can see here, they look badass. So yeah, Brandenburgers is a win, and it's good if you want to play a kind of Brandenburger playthrough, infiltration, fallen volunteers, I like that. The Gross Deutschland, this was actually Gross Deutschland Adolf Hitler, I believe. They actually became his like personal unit. I believe at start, I did a, I think I did a video on them, I did. They were like more of a ceremonial force, but they're very good. So they come with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13 men. Obviously, one will be the driver. can jump him out. As you can see, they come with 345 HP, 260 stamina. So they're very tough men. Their skill set is very high. As you can see, you're hitting the sixes here. So these are very elite. 365 manpower, 28 population cap. They come with dual MG34 belts, which is fantastic. They also come with a hell of a lot of rifle firepower. They come with some semi-autos, three of them, and you get another, and you get an SMG. These are kind of the top tier kind of standard infantry before you get in Forge they're very useful, very elite. Gross Deutschland's are fantastic. I've used them in campaigns before. And as you can see, you only have to go through the veteran rifle squad line to get to them. You do have to get the motorized, I believe, to unlock them or some the transport truck. But yeah, the Gross Deutschlands are fantastic. Definitely worth the money. And for 28 population caps, not too bad. I'd say the 
better cost wise than the Forge from Jaeger because you do get a lot of skills without having to go really expensive and you get a lot of firepower and a lot of men. So yep, Cross Deutschland is a win. I think they're a good elite unit. Obviously the, the Blitz won't last long, but still get them to the front line quick. Good elite reserve force. I do enjoy them. The Forge from Jaeger, which was the German paratroopers. Now this squad is massive. As you see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 man squad. Absolute beast. They come with 375 HP, 300 stamina. Elite German infantry. As you can see, you get a sniper. You get a semi-automatic. You get a grenade launcher man. Uh, or a grenade rifle. Rifle grenade. It has HE and high explosive anti tank. You get more rifle squads. You get MG42s. Belt fed. Yes, you heard me right. MG42 belt fed. And you get MG assistance. These guys can unleash insane amounts of firepower. As you can see, this is a bit of a weird one. Their skill set is not as good as things like the Gross Deutschlands. Gross Deutschlands are veteran infantry, you see. So with these guys, the Fulcrum Jaeger, as you can see, you're actually less skilled, but you have more potential in veterancy to get better than the Gross Deutschlands, because you have you know, more health and stamina base. You also come with more modern weapons like the MG42, and you have things like sniper. So these are your top-tier troops. 24 pop cap, 443, 443 manpower, very expensive. If you lose these squads, if you lose two or three of these squads, you will feel it, unless you're literally floating in manpower. These are elite units, use them as such. Split them up, use the sniper separately, use the grenade rifleman to provide light support. If you can get the, if you're doing like an all infantry playthrough, these guys can be a great kind of fix all problem, but they do cost a lot per man. So just remember, they will be costly if you start losing them, but definitely worth the value. I like the Fulcrum Jaeger. I should use them more. The only bad thing, very far down on the research tree, takes a while to get there. Then we have the motorized Fulcrum Jaeger, and these obviously come with a few different things. So you get the Blitz, you get. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. One's the driver. You get your standard guys. You also get things like the FG42. Yes, the beast. This is the only usage of it, I think, in the entire con uh, German tree. So the FG42 is an absolute beast. Love that gun. You also still get your sniper. You get your MGs, belt fed, and you still get your rifle grenadier, I believe. I think he's knocking about somewhere, is he? Or is he not in this? These may not get a rifle grenadier then. I mean, I didn't know that actually. So that is a slight change, but I think the um, the FG42 makes up for it. It's not a bad force altogether, but obviously ju just unless you're really desperate for them, 28 population cap, 490 manpower, just get the standard folds from Jaeger and bag them in the half track, but you can't really fit them in it. But still, if you need a me mechanized folds from Jaeger, do it, but I think the standards do the job well enough. But the, obviously the FG42, FG is it FG42? Yeah, is nice and it's a very fun weapon to use. Next, you have the AT detachments. Now, down this tree, if you go into AT, I believe they're in the... Where are they? They're down here in this kind of support line. AT is not bad. I think four, uh, four manpower, 38 30 manpower, four population cap. They bring that AT rifle. It's not the best AT rifle, but it works for the first few matches. If you need some light AT support, yeah, it's a win. Simple enough. Panzer Shrek team, awesome. This thing's a reloadable, obviously, anti-tank weapon. Has a range of about 70 meters. Penetration 185 millimeters, so it can take on basically any tank of the game. You also get a Panzerfaust 60, which has pop penetration of 200 mils. Its range is about 40 50 meters. For four population cap and 95 man power, it's a definite win. Panzer Shrek team, awesome. And tank squad. Now these boys are a bit different. You get three Panzer Shreks. You also get three Panzerfaust, and they are Panzerfaust 60s. Fantastic, great thing for 40 population cap and 303 man power. They're fantastic. You also get an STG 44 assault rifle. Which is really nice because it's one of the only uses of it in the game <laughs> i think it is so yeah definitely a win bring the anti-tank squad obviously it's down here on the research tree and you have to go through calling stage four so it's a bit of a pain in the ass but fantastic definitely a win next you have the medics four pop cap 80 manpower self-explanatory bring both your sanitators the fantastic i mean german for medic that's a win next gonna do rifleman four population cap 36 manpower the, the rifle grenade for the Germans is better because it's not two. It's just they switch the ammo type. You get HE and heat. They're pretty good. I think they're definitely worth the wait. And it's just standard grenadier troops. Same with the um, anti-tank squads. I should have said that. They're just standard grenadier troops, which is nice. You also have the commander with a bit extra skill. Um, next, you have the AP squads. AP and AT miners. Both four pop cap. Both 80 manpower. Your AP miners get 16 mine, anti-tank, anti-personnel mines each. And your AT miners get eight each. Definitely worth bringing. The fun. You get some good use out of them. Field engineers, four population cap, 100 manpower. Very good. They build defences. They can, I believe they come with some satchel charges. They can dig trenches. They can lay barbed wire. And they can also repair stuff at quicker speed than your standard infantry squads. Repair speed is one, whereas if you look at standard infantry man, repair speed is 0.5. Definitely a bring. Four pop cap, dirt cheap. Flamer, two pop cap, 60 manpower. Lots of fun. 
burn the world down. Yeah, it's, it's worth bringing if you want to use some flamethrowers. Nice, easy way to get some. I believe he's just on, simply in the infantry tree, the flamethrower. I don't know where he is, actually. He's just randomly somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I think he's actually already unlocked, but still, it's a win. Um, tank crew, yeah, bring them. Four pop cap, 22 manpower. They can repair things easy. Great for salvage at the end and recruiting your vehicles. Definitely bring a squad of the two of these always. Sniper, four pop cap, 150 manpower. If you're doing an infantry playthrough or you need some sniper support, snipers are fantastic. They have 375 HP, 300 stamina, and some good skills. I do like the sniper and four pop cap. It's definitely worth the weight in gold. Bring a couple of these if you want to hide in the forest and just watch them tear through elite troops. Really fun. German ammo crate, four pop cap, so it manpower. Standard infantry. Brings you around 200 munitions. They're great. Watch it, they're very explosive. But yeah, definitely good for bringing for ammo. Definitely. Yeah, that's a win. Infantry car, not as bad. I think they bring a little bit. It's like 250 munitions they're not bad you can tow it round, but i think you're better off just bringing the supply cart for pop cap 120 manpower i think this has about 500 munitions in it it's not bad it also has a little bit of armor so you can hook that up to a vehicle still very useful uh next we have the spotlight this thing i've never actually used it six pop cap 70 manpower it reveals enemy troops and stuff so it's useful but i've never used it personally so i can't really debate that but it looks kind of cool so if you want to bring one, bring one, but I don't think you get too much use out of it. Lafayette MGs, the both four pop cap, 95 manpower for the MG34, 105 manpower for the MG42. These are fantastic. I never used to use them. The fact is they come with very large um, belt feds. I think they have like, is that like 200 to 300 rounds, sometimes more in the belt. These guys are good for setting up and digging in and they'll just cut through enemy squads. I absolutely love them. So yeah, I think it's a thumbs up for both the MGs. I like them. Panzer Nest, six pop cap, 165 manpower. These things are fantastic. 5 to 70 armor. They're a pain in the ass to kill. You move them around quite slow. Get a couple of these towed up. Get them like, set up and dug in. They're a nightmare for the enemy. They have come with like a couple of thousand rounds of ammunition for the, I think it's an MG34 inside. Yeah, Panzer Nest, definite win. And it's not too hard to get to the Panzer Nest. It's down the engineering line. So they're fantastic. Flat guns now. 2 centimeter flat gun. Love this thing. 10 pop cap, 200 manpower. 2 centimeters a beast. Has a 10 round magazine, I believe. Just keep pumping out. It has decent armor penetration, decent HE rounds. You can even do a better as the anti air because it is an AA gun. Love the two centimeter, tow it up, set it up. That's a win. Two centimeter flat 38. It's just the same thing with the gun shield. It's actually a bit higher than the other one. It's fantastic once again. Two centimeters are fantastic for the German force. One of my favorite looking guns as well. Definitely a win. 3.7 centimeters. Obviously, that one's 10 pop cap, 210 manpower. My bad. The 3.7 is 12 pop cap, 285 manpower. Not a big fan of 3.7. I'd rather just skip to things like the 88, but still provides more kick, gives you a bit more bang for your buck. But I prefer the 2 centimeter personally. Next, the 5 centimeter is 19 pop cap, 525 manpower. I'm not the biggest fan of the 5 centimeter. It doesn't do the job for me. I'd rather just go straight for the 88. But on the way there, if when you go to the um, obviously the anti aircraft line, it's there. You can use it if you need it, but I'm not a big fan. But the shield's pretty good on it. Next, you have the 88s. Both are 30 pop cap. The first one's 775 manpower. The second one's 825 manpower. This one has better penetration, as you can see, 153. This one's max is 126. Both are fantastic. You tow them up. They have good gun shields. They have large crews, so they can, even if they take losses, they can keep working. They have HE and armor piercing. They'll tear through anything. Flat guns are both fantastic. They do take quite a bit of research points to get down there, but for 30 pop cap, they'll take out pretty much any tank in the game. And they can also do AA and anti infantry. Both flat ones are thumbs up. They're fantastic. Next, we've got the 2.8 centimeter SPZB41. This thing's actually fired to armor piercing composite rigid rounds. It was a special little gun they made during the war. Three man crew. It's six pop cap, 155 uh, manpower. It has 102 mils pen. So it's not a bad little anti tank gun, but I'm not a biggest fan of it. It will do like damage and get in, but you're better off having a dedicated AT. But it is in the kind of support tree, I believe. I don't know if they switched it. Yeah, it's up here just after the AT detachment. So you can use it, but. It's a miss for me. It's personally not one of my favourites, but you know you can get some use. I mean, it also comes with some small high explosive rounds, but you're better for having an AT gun. Next one, the AT line, ten for the three point seven centimeter, the ten pop cap, two hundred manpower. It's not bad for your first AT gun. It was nicknamed the door knocker in real life. Not very good. You know, only fifty two mils pen, but it's HE rounds are fast firing. You can tear through infantry squads with them. Nice little support gun, but against armor, it gets outclassed very quickly. Next, it's got the four point seven. It's ten pop cap, two hundred fifty manpower. This thing has 92 mils pen. It's a tough gun. It's not too bad, but like I say, it gets outclassed pretty quick. It's also ugly as hell. But for the same pop cap, but more manpower, it's more effective than 3.7, but has a lower fire rate. So definitely useful. 
I've made some good use of it, but by you know, by the time T34s are coming, it's just not not strong enough. Next, we've got the five centimeters pack 38, 14 pop cap, 310 manpower. Things actually really good. Good rate of fire, decent pen at 102 mils max. Also comes with HE rounds. It also do believe it has some composite rigid. It's not a bad gun weapon system. Decent. It can take on T34 at close range or the side, but it's better suited at kind of light to medium tank support and dealing with infantry squads. But still a decent all round weapon. Next, we've got the 7.5 centimeter pack 9738. Now, this is a captured French gun. It's loaded with high explosive rounds and high explosive anti tank rounds. Has 88 mils pen, but that's every range because it uses heat round. It's not bad. It'll tear through medium tanks and even damage T-34s. But it's it's kind of in, in the tank tree they added it. So obviously people know my opinion on the research tree. It needs revamping. So you do need to take it to get to the 7.5. But it's not bad. But I personally think you're actually better with the 5 centimeter because of how it works. But still, it has its uses. It's a bit heavy to tow, so you do need vehicle to move around quick. But it's not bad. Next, you have the 7.5 centimeter, the pack 40. This is the beast. 150 mils pen. It's 25 pop cap though, 500 manpower, so it ain't cheap. It's going to cost you as much as a tank, but this thing will tear through most Russian tanks and American tanks. It's fantastic. Great thing. It also has better pen than Stu's or Panzer IVs because it is the Pack 40. It's the full-on Pack 40 L46 lengthened barrel. So this is a very good anti-tank gun. It can see you through the entire campaign. It might struggle against things like IS-2s and stuff like that, and obviously like your Sir Sherman Jumbos, but very effective weapon system fast firing efficient has high explosive rounds as well i also think it brings some heat rounds yeah you can't go wrong with pack 40 definitely a thumbs up next we've got the 80.8 centimeter pack 43 41 same gun the king tiger and the jag tiger it's 236 mils max pen it's a monster it's very heavy it's 30 pop cap 1020 manpower it's very pricey it's overkill you're better off bringing this thing on like a nash horn or a king tiger or a jag panda the problem is it's easy to kill just like any anti-tank gun um it's useful if you only go all in for you want to dig in but personally bring it on a mobile weapon system it's far more effective it's too pricey for how vulnerable it is but it does kill stuff and it does look absolutely gorgeous you actually saw one of these at bobbington tank museum they're an absolute monster i'm just going to take a quick sip of water oh god we're getting there people we're cooking with gas now now we're onto the mortars now first we've got the eight centimeter it's 10 pop cap 260 manpower fantastic it's rapid fire has high explosive and smoke rounds the smoke rounds aren't white phosphorus like the russians or americans so you won't light your troops on fire so there is that advantage but obviously you can't burn things down it comes with about 30 high explosive rounds it's fairly accurate decent range about 160 mils you can even take out light vehicles if you hit them especially open top ones yeah the eight centimeters fantastic next we've got the 10 centimeters 18 pop cap 410 manpower it's not bad but you're better off just going straight for the 12 centimeter because the, the amount of ammunition less it brings you need just go for the big bang for your books it's the same population cap the 10 centimeters all right but just go for the 12 centimeter it's 18 pop cap 460 manpower this thing has high explosives i don't think it brings smoke for the german side so the russian one has high explosive smoke in incendiary this thing will take out light vehicles medium vehicles it can even damage heavy it'll destroy open top it will decimate infantry and it has far better range than the other models the two, 12 centimeter is fantastic i actually did a more video check it out if you want more details but yeah absolutely love that weapon system next thing the 20 centimeter is a spigot mortar now this is weird this one it's not in the standard mortar tree it is in the like, engineering tree this thing fires a basically a 20 centimeter kind of high explosive weapon it also comes with smoke this was used by engineers or pioneers in real life to artillerymen in this case to clear obstacles the thing is fantastic it's 18 manpower but it's 818 population cap 810 manpower it's massively over costed this thing will take out pretty much any vehicle if it hits it with the high explosive damage it'll clear obstacles it'll clear mines it'll kill infantry but it's very easy to kill and it's very pricey so only bring it if you have manpower in abundance but it's very fun to use next we have the beast the light infantry gun now this is obviously in the artillery tree we're going to go all the way down here this is op this is probably the best gun system in the game for the cost it's 14 pop cap 360 manpower has high explosive and heat rounds it comes with a four-man crew it has a nice little gun shield it will take out things like t-34s and light tanks and medium tanks if hit correctly especially it could take out t-34s i've even seen it take out things like an is2 at the right angle it's very effective it's very powerful a couple of these will decimate the enemy they also lobs the rounds over in kind of an arc instead of direct fire so it makes it very effective by using it over terrain one of the best weapons of the game it's a definite win next we've got this this is actually in the same this is the 7.5 centimeter lg40 it's in the fulsham jaeger line up here over here somewhere over here over here where are you sir that's right, there there there, sir. there it is this thing's not bad it comes with he and heat i'm not a fan of it i always find my crews get killed if you want to use it with your fulsham jaeger use it but the idea was it was i think it was supposed to be used by paratroops dropped in behind in the lines 
it looks kind of cool but it's just a recorder's rifle it's a no from me i think it's not worth it just get light and trickle way better ah the sig 15 centimeter 35 pop cap 810 manpower pricey it's a 15 centimeter gun what more do you need it will take it'll cripple any tank it'll kill any infantry it's quite slow firing it's quite slow moving it's a beast it's a big old brute i love it take it it's fantastic nothing more to be said 10.5 centimeter this is kind of your proper artillery guns going that we're obviously back down on the artillery tree this is where your kind of actual artillery comes it's not a bad weapon system it fires fairly quick it's 25 pop cap 770 munition uh, manpower it'll take out like vehicles if it hits them it comes with i believe armor piercing rounds and he rounds and some i think some smoke it's a great artillery piece i actually have a video going through all the artillery if you want more details it's got good range good firepower yeah it's yes yeah, it's, it's good if you want some artillery support you can't really go wrong with the standard next you have the 10 centimeter which is just a long barrel variant it's 25 pop cap 875 manpower it fires basically the exact same i believe it says 10 centimeter but yeah it actually is actually 10.5 centimeter rounds something weird in the um how the germans named it whatever but yeah just like that it's got better range it fires at a good rate of fire comes with semi ammunition great calling artillery i like it two of these far and away can do really good damage so yeah it's definitely a win next we've got the 15 centimeter the 18 it's 35 pop cap 1025 manpower i actually don't prefer these over 10.5s or 10 the slower firing i think for the accuracy you're better off having two 10s over two 15s if you want them take them but i think the 10 centimeters do the job well and the 15 centimeter yeah it's just it's i just don't find it that useful the 15.5 as well if it's got a lot of firepower like the other it's slow loading it looks ugly as hell it's 35 pop cap 1125 manpower i just don't think it's that useful bring an airstrike bring a tank just yeah i don't find it that useful at all. it's a no from me next we've got the 17 centimeter the moza lafayette 35 pop cap 1280 manpower no it's crap it's too slow firing too inaccurate yeah it has a lot of firepower to it but yeah just like the 21 centimeter it's overpriced it's not really worth it I'm not a fan and you need something good to tow it otherwise it takes forever to get there next we've got the 21 centimeter Morser 18 40 pop cap 1530 munitions at manpower don't use it yeah it fires a high explosive round that's very powerful it never hits the target it's slow firing just yeah it's, it's, it's not great just just avoid it I don't think it's worth the cost and it's really far down the artillery line unless you really want to go for the 60 centimeter gear out you know the car siege mortar just don't do it it's not worth it at all not worth it but it does look cool it does look cool but it's still not worth it now we have the neville worthers all the neville worthers are fantastic in my opinion they all have the uses so you've got the 15 21 and 30. first one is 35 pop cap 810 manpower it's great it six rounds it's uh you know, these are high explosive rockets they'll take out armor they'll take out infantry they'll take out buildings they're fantastic slow reload speed but obviously it's a multiple launch rocket system you fire them in salvos great for just before your assault position fantastic weapon system yeah, really good. Quite pricey in manpower and for rearming for munitions, but I do like them. Next, we've got the 21 centimeters, 40 pop cap, 9 and 10 manpower. You only get five shots, but they're you know, stronger than the 15 centimeter. It's really good. Um, personally, the 30 centimeter outclasses both, but once again, multiple launch rocket system. Can't go wrong with it. It'll kill anything it hits. It has a good rate, of, uh, good firepower, slow reload speed, but still very effective. And lastly, you have know, the 50, 30 centimeter never worth it. 50 manpower, 1020, no, 50 pop cap, 1020 manpower. Has less range than the others, but these things will absolutely freaking annihilate anything that it touches. They are fantastic. Some of the best artillery in the game. Probably the best multiple launch rocket system, better than the Katushas, in my opinion. Really good. Definitely worth your points. But obviously, very far down the research tree, so they do cost quite a bit to get there. Next, we have the 60 centimeter Carl Siege Mortar. If you get to it, 60 population cap, 1625 manpower. It fires slow, it fires gigantic rounds, it will kill anything it hits. It's complete overkill. But I do love it. It's a yes to get. If you can get down to it, bring it. But you don't need it. But you kind of do need it because it's cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's fantastic. Definitely a win. Um, yeah, can't go wrong with Thor. The old Thor, Carl Siege Mortar. But yeah, you, you, there's better things to buy, but it's still good. So onto the vehicles. We have the BMW R71. This is the MG34 variant one. Motorcycles are good for scouting, but they won't you won't survive long. Has Halama 1.5. It'll flip, it'll die. It's not really worth it. Now we have the, the cable wagons, the cars. This one is an MG34. It's like the arm, it's open topped. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. Next, cable wagon. Don't bring it. Two pop cap, 25 manpower. Don't. It's not worth it. We have the cable bargain with the MG34. Four pop cap, 90 manpower. Once again, don't bring it. It's just worthless. 
This cable wagon, I believe, is the amphibious wagon. Is this the destroyer wagon? MG34. Also, don't bring it. This has even worse. It's not the guns forward mounted. Just don't bring it. 2.5 armor. Don't do it. Opal Blitz Transport, four pop cap, 30 munitions. You don't need it. You either bring it with your infantry or bring a supply truck if you want to tow stuff or a half track. You don't need it. Avoid it. The engineering wagon. This thing's not bad if you want engineers to get to the front line quicker. It also comes with some um, rearmament for the engineers, um, like building buildings and stuff. It's not bad for six manpower and 150, ma 150 manpower and six pop cap. It can also tow. So, yeah, it's pretty good for that. So, yeah, these aren't bad and they're pretty cool looking, pretty nippy. Next, you have the SDK of Z10. It's basically like, I think this was what the Pioneers used for towing. Don't buy it independently. You don't need it. It looks kind of cool. But if you want anything towing, just bring supply trucks or Opal Mutiliers, which is basically this, but the supply variant. They can tow and do everything you need. So just, yeah, don't invest in these separately. Next, the KFZ13 MG34. This one's actually not bad for a car. It's got eight hull armor and they actually have some, you know, as a gun shield. But still, you don't need it. There's better options. Just don't go down that line. You're wasting 120 manpower on it as well. It's not worth it. Next, the FD KFZ 250 over one. It's eight pop cap and 120 manpower. This is a decent half track, but like I say, if you really need half tracks, bring them with the squads that you need. You don't really need to bring these independently unless you die, unless you're kind of doing a, uh, a playthrough specifically, or you want to chuck anti tank squads in them or something, but still a good choice if you need them, but you shouldn't really need to bring them separately that much. Next, we're down on this kind of a weird separate line, which is all the armored cars and stuff. So this first one is basically a two centimeter half track. Yeah, it's decent, eight to 10 hull armor. It has turret armor of 10, crew of 3. You can actually have a fourth one in there. Two centimeters good on it, but it is open top, so it's a little bit of a rule. I do like it for 12 pop cap and 265 manpower. It's definitely a good buy. Yeah, I enjoy that. Next, we've got the half track with the uh, small anti tank gun on it. It's the little um, armor piercing composite rigid one. 8 to 10 hull armor. Don't bring this. It's not good for a half track. It's 8 pop cap, 270 manpower. It's a waste, in my opinion. There's far better options, so it's a no for me. The LC of the half track. This is the one with the MG at the front. This can bring quite a lot of troops in it. I believe it can carry how many? Carry twelve men. Obviously, three of the crew. It has hull armor eight. It's open topped. You shouldn't need to bring it independently, but if you need some, it's there. It's you know eight pop gun, hundred ten manpower. It's fairly cheap. It's decent. Next, the half track mortar. Fourteen pop cap, three hundred five manpower. This is actually really good. It's an eight centimeter mortar. The only thing is, its firing arc is set to the front, which isn't great. But I really like this half track. It's definitely a win. I would say, get it. I really like the motorized half track. Two of these, and they're kind of protected, even though it's open top. They are a little bit protected. You also have that little MG on the back. Yeah, love the motorized half half track with the mortar. Really love it. Next, we have the Aus D, which obviously has eight to fourteen point five armor. You also get your MGs in it. You've got your MG thirty forty two belt and your MG forty two drum. So MG forty twos better armor, and I believe it comes with camouflage. There's the camo. Boom. Yep, that's a buy. But they should, you know, if you want these independently. But still, they're very fun. Next, we have the Walking Stuka, the Werferman. 54 pop cap, uh, 1,115 manpower. This thing is awesome. It's basically your 30 centimeter never worth it on a half track, and it also comes with enough for two full reloads. It's a buy. Buy it. It's, it's amazing. Buy it. Yep, yeah, it's a buy. But it is, it is pricey to go down to that. I believe it is just there. So it is quite pricey to get to it research wise, but it's fantastic. Love the Walking Stuka. That's a thumbs up for me. Next, we have the Flam half track. This is a fantastic vehicle, eight pop cap, 320 manpower. If you can get this into an urban zone or a place where infantry are hiding, it will torch everything, including vehicles. It's fantastic. I have a bit of an issue where I set myself on fire quite a lot with it, though. So do be careful. Those two flame nozzles, it's very lethal. Obviously, light AT can still take it out. So do be prepared to see a flaming ball of death. But very fun, very useful. Next, you have the two centimeter half track with the turret. This thing's actually really good. You standard eight to 14.5 hull armor. 12 pop cap, 265 manpower. It's actually really good for a two centimeter. I really like this as a sport variant. It's also really good to kind of have it there just in case you need to deal with light armor infantry. So yeah, that's a win for me. And it's down on this half track line here. So you get all the kind of weird, unique variants there. Next, we have the drilling. This is Smiley Ghost's favorite friend Tyler. I play with him quite a bit on PVP if you watch him. This thing is 14 pop cap, 315 munitions. It has three 50 millimeter guns on the turret. They have high X and armor piercing. This thing shreds. It's basically a Gatling cannon. Fantastic. Definitely bring it. It will. It's not so good against armor, but against infantry squads, you will rinse. It will just kill everything. It's fantastic. Definitely a win. Next, we have the. It's basically the half track with the 7.5 centimeter. This is the pack 40L46. You get 150 mils pen. Obviously, armor's 8 to 14.5. 22 pop cap, 520 manpower. Now, if you think about that, 
has less pop cap than the than the artillery than the under tank gun itself which is 25 and 500 it's only 20 manpower more so yes it is a light vehicle correct not gonna lie about that definitely a light vehicle but it brings a hell of a lot of firepower it's quite mobile and it's not too hard to get down that line to it so i think it's definitely a win next we've got the it's basically an opal blitz of a two centimeter eh, you get some mobile ia but it's very light to kill don't bring it it'll just die very quickly another opal basically a different kind of it is the opal mutilier basically with it two centimeter don't bring it everything on it will die both a 10 pop cap this one's 285 manpower that's 255 that's a no this one 12 pop cap 335 manpower it's a 3.7 centimeter on an opal mutilier don't do it once again it will just die it's not worth it 3.7 size centimeter on an armored car is a bit better 4 to 14.5 armor it's decent but it's 14 pop cap 335 manpower there's better options it still will die pretty quickly I don't think it's worth it but the gun can fire through the front the barrel just goes straight through the vehicle so that is quite funny but yeah it's a no from me the armored cars now as you can see six pop cap 175 manpower at the start the mg can be quite useful it will die easily it doesn't bring much firepower six to fifteen hull armor to armor 10. yeah it's not really worth it next you've got the else a222 this is six to fifteen armor it's open topped it's light it does obviously come with a two centimeter it's 12 pop cap 270 manpower it's decent, but there's, I'd rather bring the half track the two centimeters. So yeah, not really my flavor. Next, we have the first kind of proper armored car. It's the two three one, twelve pop cap, two hundred eighty five manpower. Comes with a two centimeter and MG. Obviously, hull armor is four five point five to fourteen point five. Same with the turret armor. It's fast. It's mobile. It's quite effective. I actually, quite like this thing. It's decent. It looks weird, but it's a good little armored car. Definitely good for early stages of the game. Gets out class quite quick though. Next, we have the PZ SPW. I believe this is a captured French vehicle. And boy, can you tell. It's full armor 5 to 20 and turret armor 5 to 26. The 2.5 centimeter gun, yes, that weird thing. It fires like a dunk. Dunk. But it actually has decent armor penetration at 52 mils. It's just not that good. But it is quite fun to use. Early war, you can kind of use that. But it's down the, the captured vehicle line if you want to use it. But still, don't rely on it for anti-tank because it just won't, it won't do the job that well. Next, you have the first kind of the cool kind of Puma variants. This is the 2 centimeter. 5 to 30 hull armor, so turret armor is 8 to 30. 14 pop cap, 295 manpower. I, this is fantastic. It's mobile, it's effective, and it brings a lot of firepower. Great for supporting Pumas. I do like this. Great way to get a 2 centimeter auto cannon mobile. Next, you have the Puma with a 5 centimeter L60. 102 mil pens, has an MG42. Hull armor is 5 to 30, turret armor is 8 to 30. 20 pop cap, 355. The Puma's fantastic. Great all round vehicle. Great for scouting. Great for hitting light and medium vehicles. Great for kind of punching into the back lines and doing some damage. Do love the Puma. Fantastic recon vehicle. It was very revolutionary in real life as well. And it has those glorious, as you can see, those glorious smoke launchers. Makes it very effective. Next, we have the Stummel. 7.5 centimeter variant of the Puma. Has the short barreled, 5 to 30 Hulama. This thing comes with high explosive and heat. And also, I believe it comes with some smokes. 116 mils pen on the heat. It's a very good vehicle. Very effective. It also does come with an MG42 drum. Really like the Stummel, you can also, it basically fires like the light infantry gun, the 7.5, over terrain. So yeah, it's fantastic. And here is the pack wagon, literally known as the pack hunter. Hitler demanded all the, all the Pumas get, at the end to get converted into these for more anti-tank. 5 to 30 hull armor, turret armor 14.5. Has that 7.5 centimeter pack, the actual full variant, so it's 150 mils pen. The only bad thing, obviously, is limited in where its firing angle is at the start. But the thing is very mobile, very effective. It's a fantastic anti-tank hunter, and it is the end of the puma tree very very effective and very worth it for 30 30 pop cap and 554 manpower yeah it's just fantastic next got a five centimeter pack on the truck 16 manpower 335 um 16 pop cap 335 manpower it's not worth it though the truck dies too easy just bring the five centimeter by itself 8.8 .8 on the truck 35 pop cap 830 manpower like i say it's still too light in my opinion to be effective what it costs just bring the 8.8 .8 centimeter by itself but it is quite mobile if you dig it in, but it won't last long. It'll die and then the crew will bail. So that's the problem. Next, we've got supply trucks. Both supply trucks are fantastic. Both cost six pop cap. This is 200 manpower and the Mutilier is 350. Bring the Mutilier. It has double the populate, uh, supply amount. So for the same pop cap, I know it's a lot more points, but it's, it's double the amount of supplies and it can tow heavier stuff. So yeah, it's fantastic. Definitely bring the Mutilier. Fuel truck, six pop cap, 100, um, 100 manpower. You shouldn't run out of fuel, but you, there if you need it. Engineering truck, 8 pop cap, 180 manpower. Fantastic. Get your engineers to the front line. Has a thousand resources for rearming their um, ability to build stuff. Really good. Do like the engineering truck. Always use it. Been using it in my strap battalion campaign, so really good. 
Panzerwerf 42, 40 pop cap, 1,235 manpower. Fantastic. Armed with a 15 centimeter, um, and it has, as you can see, 10 of those. This thing has a slow reload speed, but it's mobile. You go in, you launch off your multiple launch rocket systems. It's a great, great variant. Really like it, and it's in the Neville Werfer tree, just there. So yeah, it gives you some armor as well. It's um, armors 6 to 12 and 10. Keep it in the back lines, keep it firing, keep it mobile. Really good. First tank now, Panzer 1 LSP. Panzer 1's light, 5 to 13 armor, turret armor 8 to 14. Dual MG 13s. I like it. Kills a lot of infantry. It's small, it's effective, it's cheap. 8 pop cap, 135 manpower, you can't go wrong. It's your first tank. It'll do well for your first couple of matches. Panzer 1 LSP is 18 pop cap, 315. The baby tiger. 10 to 80 hull armor, turret armor 20 to 80. Things are pain in the arse to kill. Comes with two MG34 Panzer loops. Was used actually for resistance fighting. This thing will shred infantry. Used them on the Strapatine campaign. Really like them. They're cheap, they're efficient. They do cost quite a bit. If you actually go down to the Panzer 1, I think it's like seven or eight research points to unlock it, but really good win. It's definitely a thumbs up, like the Panzer 1 hour staff. Panzer 2 hour C. Now, all the Panzer 2s are useful, as you can see 18 pop cap and all, and they increase 250, 270, and 325 manpower. All of them are good. All of them have a slight look. So the armor just basically goes up to that variant. And then you get to loops, which is the more modern variant that comes with smoke launchers. They're all good wins. They all use two centimeters. I believe that has the L55. Or these have the these all have the L55, I believe. Is it true? Yep. So they all have the same kind of weapon system. Just depends. The L style comes with more armor. All are good. All are worth the points. Can't go wrong with the Panzer II. Great support tank, great anti infantry, and great kind of scout usage. Next, you have the Panzer 38T or the 38 variant. As you can see, they're all 20 pop cap, 295, 315, 3. 55 and then 365 the house g now we can see them here in this line here they would lead to the joe panzer line oh we have a lot that sneaky bugger as you can see basically what happens is it's the same gun system and the armor just increases on them as it goes up it just increases that has the 47.8 i think that's slightly better gun than the other one but basically they're all pretty much the same tank just to get slightly better armor as you go up and slightly more upgraded all of them are good. All of them are worth it. I won't go through them individually. You can just look at the tank videos for that. All the 38Ts are fantastic. They do well until kind of early mid-war kind of a period. They're fantastic. They get outclassed by T-34s, but I do like them. The Czechoslovakians got that right, and they look pretty cool. Next, you've got the captured French tanks. First one's the 38H735F. Armors 10 to 40. Turret armors 25 to 40. 20 pop cap, 345. The gun's really weak. It's a 3.7 centimeter. It's not great. It's not the best armored. Yeah, I wouldn't use it personally. It's yeah, just just avoid it. It's not great. <laughs> it does have an MG31, but yeah, it's not great. Next, we have the 38H. This has basically got three 30 centimeter, four 30 centimeter rockets on it. It's a mobile artillery piece. It's great, but personally, just bring the walking Stuka for 60 pop cap and 815. Bring the walking Stuka, more bang for your buck, and looks cooler. Next, we have the 35S. I think it's known as the Suomi. 30 pop cap, 370 manpower. Obviously. Hull armor is 10 to 47, turret armor is 30 to 56. Penetration is 57, the guns are 4.7 centimeter. It's underwhelming, it's not worth it. Don't go down that line for this thing. It's slow, it's ineffective, it's not worth it, and it's French. <laughs> now we're on to the Panzer 3s. Panzer 3 LSD is fantastic. 10 to 30 hull armor, 10 to 30 turret armor. Why I like it? Yeah, the main gun's 3.7 centimeters. It's got dual MG34 Panzer loose and the hull one. This thing has three MGs. This thing will shred infantry. Best light anti tank. 30 pop cap, 350 manpower. Next, we've got the Panzer 3 House Death. It's been upgraded to the 5 centimeter short barrel. It only has 1 MG in the kind of coaxial, and it has the whole one. 30 manpower, 380, uh, 30 pop cap, 380 munitions. It's the same armor, though, as the first one, so it's still very light. Then we get to Panzer 3 House H. This is 10 to 60 hull armor, 10 to 35 turret armor. Same gun as the last one, but basically they bolted on some steel plates, so it's not actually the tank recasted. They just, as you can see, they put the hull on. Still pretty light. It's 30 pop cap, 490 manpower. It's a bit more survivable, but basically similar to the F, but just got an armoured plate stuck on it here and there. Let's have the Panzer 3 J30 pop cap, 390 manpower. So it's cheaper than the H, which is surprising. It comes with a 5 centimeter same gun, and the armor's 10 to 50 and 10 to 50. As you can see, these were actually re, like new hulls, like were upgraded, whereas that actually has more armor. So you go down that line, Panzer 3, you go from the H to the J, and it's cheaper. So the H is actually better, which is confusing, but yep, yeah, just is. Panda 3 House J L60. This thing's a beast. So 10 to 50 armor, same as last. You've got your MGs, but 102 mils pen. That's the long barrel 5 centimeter. This thing can take on T34s. 
It makes the Panda 3 still useful, medium war, but obviously outclass late war. Do like the Panda 3, great vehicle, and that comes a beast. Panda 3 out stealth. Oh, that's 30 manpower, 430. 30 pop cap, 430 manpower. This one's 30 pop cap, 450 manpower. It's got that L60, it's 10 to 50 armor. It's basically a slight upgraded variant, I believe, but not much change. Still effective to the medium war. Do like it. It's a good buy. Panda 3 out stem, 30 pop cap, 460 manpower. The exact same as the last one, but you've got side skirts on the turret and things, so it protects from like, like anti tank weapons and occasionally anti tank grenades. So, still a good buy, fairly, fairly decent. Panda 3 out N, now this is where it really changes. 35 pop cap, 460 manpower. It's got that short barrel 7.5 centimeter. It's got the skirts on the turret, but not on the side of the vehicle. This thing has heat and high explosives. It's the light infantry gun, light infantry gun shoots gun. This thing can take out T-34s, it can decimate infantry. It makes the Panzer III useful in the late game. Really like this Panzer III. Cheap, efficient, really good. Panzer III Flam, 35 pop cap, 470 manpower. Best flame tank in the game. Has around 500 flame loaded into that turret in one, one kind of magazine of it. 10 to 80 hull armor. Did you see that? 10 to 80. So they've upgraded the hull armor. It's really effective. Two MGs, great flame tank, great range. Love it. Fantastic vehicle. And as you can see on the research tree, the Panzer III Flam is at the end, just like the end. Next, we have the Panzer IV Austi, 35 pop cap, 430 manpower. This thing is very light, 10 to 30 armor, 10 to 30 armor to it. Comes with that 7.5 centimeter short barrel. This thing also comes with smoke rounds. I really like the first Panzer IV. It's very light though, so remember when you bring it, even though you have to go down the tree to get it, it's very easily outclassed by Russian weapon systems because it's so lightly armored, so it will die quickly. Then we get the Panzer IV Aust F1, 10 to 50 armor. So it's basically the first variant gun, but it's been upgraded. It's not bad. You definitely want to move to that very quickly to actually have some chance of survival. It's decent. I like the short barrel gun. I like how it brings smoke, heat, high explosive, and armor piercing. It's very good, uh, like multi role weapon system. Next, you have the Aust F2. This is 40 pop cap, 610 manpower. Now, this is the first major upgrade. Same armor, but it has that 137 mils pen. Now, as you can see, it's the Pack 40 L43, right? Or the L46 is the actual anti tank gun. Didn't have room to get the full anti tank gun in the Panzer IV turret. So, you actually have less penetration than things like the half track Panzer Pack 40. And the actual pack 40 anti tank but still mobile effective but quite pricey at 610 manpower then we get the panzer 4 hours chief 40 pop caps 620 manpower and as you can see 80 pull armor max big jump in armor penet armor protection same gun same munitions uh, uh, not missing mgs good tank 40 pop cap still decent i like it it's effective it's decent and obviously now you're moving down the panzer 4 tree to unlock other variants as well then we've got the Panzer IV Aust H, which is basically the same as the G, but it comes with side skirts and sides that's around the turret. Also comes with a pintle mounted MG at the top, so you've got an extra MG for your commander to jump out and start spraying. It's fantastic. Then you've got the Panzer IV Aust J, this is 40 pop cap, 630 manpower. Now, what thing is, the actual Aust J's were made to be more efficient. You've got all those MGs, the same gun, the same armor. You lose the side skirts, and I believe the turret was manual move instead of electric. The turret has basically the same rotation speed. So if you get to it, you're basically getting the same tank for slightly cheaper. So that's not bad at all. So it's decent. Like I say, the R stage comes with side skirts. I think you should stick with that. A little bit of extra protection. Next, it's got the Werewolf Wind, 30 pop cap, 620 manpower. 420 mil cannons, 10 to 80 hull armor. Turret armor's light. This thing shreds infantry and planes. Best support vehicle in the game, probably for anti infantry kills. Love it. Werewolf Wind is a yes. Enough said. Oswind, 35 pop cap, 620 manpower. It's a 3.7 centimeter. It's not as good as the Werewolf Wind. The turret armor's slightly better. No, don't like it. Werewolf Wind mints it every way. Oswind. It's just, it's just a crap Werbel wind. Don't like it. Not as good. I personally would go with the Werbel wind. Now we have the Panthers. Now there's something a bit weird on the research tree. When they redid it, they put the Panther in front of the tie. Now anyone knows history knows the tie came out before the Panther. But they've done it to make, I think, just make people use the Panthers more. Panther's amazing. 45 pop cap, 1,180 manpower. Probably the best anti-tank tank in the game. 190 mils pen. 7.5 centimeter high velocity gun. Fast reloading. Now one thing to know, the shells are reinforced like real life. The high explosive shells on the 7.5 are lesser than most 7.5s because they're reinforced shells. So it's not got as much high explosive power, but the armor piercing is fantastic. It's got quick reload speed. It's got a great front armor, obviously hull armor, 16 to 80, but it's very good sloped. Remember that slope makes the armor better. And the turret armor is 1700. One thing about the Panther, the side armor is quite light. Unlike the Tiger, this thing cannot take good hits from the side or the rear. The side armor will get penned quite easy. Keep the front towards the enemy, and it's the best tank hunting tank in the game, in my opinion. It's fast, it's mobile, it's efficient, and it looks absolutely freaking gorgeous. Look at that. That is a beauty. Pretty thing. So, yeah, Panthers are thumbs up. Fantastic. Next, you get to the Aust A. And this thing, base, I think it upgrades the armor slightly on the turret. And it also gets the pintle mounted. Fantastic thing. 
it basically just like I say 45 pop cap 1030 manpower slight upgrades really enjoyable you gotta enjoy it fantastic vehicle and then finally you get to the hours g this thing is 45 pop cap 1250 manpower pull armor 82 max and throw it on 110 so it actually changes basically but it has a zimmer can you see the zimmer coating on it so it has zimmer mate it's basically a slight upgraded variant it's fantastic if you want to go down the panther line but the first panther does the job for me but still a very good tank but panther line can't really go wrong obviously leads to the joke panther as well next we have this is the char b2 actually but the converted it's the b2 this thing is awful it is 35 pop cap 535 manpower me and pogo use it in our campaign you do get 4.7 centimeter and a 7.5 centimeter and you get a hull uh, coaxial mg it's slow it's not very powerful the 7.5 is too low velocity to take out enemy troop tanks it's got to kill infantry its armor is 10 to 60 its turret armor is 30 to 60. it will die there's lots of weak spots just just don't bring it it's just not worth it and it is on the um it's down up on the here it's on the captured french line it's just not worth it it's just not worth it you get to it quite quick but it's not worth it next we've got the panzer six six panzer six h the tiger fantastic 15 pop cap 1310 manpower so it's cheaper you know it's a bit more but a bit more price than the panther whole armor 25 to 130 turret armor 25 to 130. its front armor is actually weaker than the panthers the panther has it because the slope the thing is this thing is got good armor on the front and the sides and even decent on the rear turret armor strong i would say 8.8 .8 centimeter gun not as much pen as the panther with 166 but its high explosive shells are stronger the panther this is different to the panther the main thing obviously comes to smoke launchers it's a breakthrough tank it can take more punishment than the panther especially on the sides it's designed to break through and punch through the enemy lines with the panthers designed to hunt tanks but the tiger is a fantastic all-round tank probably one of the best tanks in the game and it's gorgeous saw one of these in real life absolutely phenomenal T tigers a win 100 percent a win obviously quite far down on the research tree tiger oust e 50 pop cap 1310 basically comes with a pintle mounted slight upgrades to it fantastic thing I do believe they removed the smoke launchers on these because in real life the smoke launchers will actually catch fire when they were shot so that would make sense why it doesn't have smoke launchers but i do like smoke launchers personally don't know if it comes with anything it's got any built into the hull but i do believe they do so yeah i'd personally stick with the first one for the smoke launchers next we have the oust e the ace the ace just gives you an elite crew 50 pop cap 1380 makes no difference to the tank's usage so i don't really see the point personally but if you want to bring it because it looks cool with the camo netting feel free but that's it next we have the king tiger early 60 pop cap 1680 manpower it's a beast 25 to 150 hull armor 25 to 100 turret armor 236 mil pen and you get three mgs with a pin on that it's a monster but i always have really bad luck with it getting destroyed the thing is by the time you've got this thing the only thing that you really need it for is taking down is2s it's a monster stick it in a ditch watch it take on the entire force it looks really cool it's pricey though so just be careful at 1680 manpower losing one of these does definitely hurt you next we have the house b the late variant has more armor on the turret same gun absolute monster 60 pop cap 1780 manpower it's overkill it's expensive but it is gorgeous also saw one of these in real life it's ridiculous how big it is definitely a win if you get down to that kind of area definitely bring it nothing can compare to the sheer power of this tank even the is2 trembles in its presence but an is2 can take it out with a good shot Next, we have the Panzer Jaeger 1, 20 pop cap, 300 manpower. Do you like this thing? Really like the armoured. It's your first kind of tank destroyer on the tree, if you kind of find it down here. It's a really good tank, good freight of fire, great for the first few battles of taking that light Russian and American armour. Love the Panzer Jaeger, it's got a soft spot in my heart. It's a definite win. Stug 3 RSB, the first Stug. It's 10 to 50 armour. It's got a 7.5 centimetre L24. So that's the light infantry guns weapon. Comes with smoke, heat, high explosive, and some armor pierce, I believe. It's a good little tank it's 30 pop cap 445 manpower that's the thing though the stug line is a bit of a cheeky line they're lower on pop cap than some of the bigger tanks but it is a dead end on the line but i do like the storm shoots they're kind of they're quite squat and quite decent arm at the front so yeah stug 3 is good early war tank marla 2 30 pop cap 555 manpower has the pack l46 so that's the same as the actual anti-tank gun good anti-tank thing light but effective good tank destroyer 5 to 35 alarma also comes with mg marla 2 is a win Marla 3 is 30 pop cap, 555 is the exact same. No MG support, slightly higher, comes with the same gun. The problem is less armor and it's taller. Great for if you can get peeking over cover, but the Marla 2 does win out in fact that has an MG. But still, I do like this for peeking over fences and pumping rounds out. Great anti tank gun, useful throughout the war, really good. Jag Panzer 38, the Hetzer, 35 pop cap, 535 manpower, 860 alarma, but it's good slope, has that remote control turret so your crew don't have to be exposed, so that's really good. 
Comes with the L48, which is 139 mils pen, same what the tanks have. Great little vehicle, the Hetzer, you can't go wrong. Small, effective, hard to kill. Great thing. And it's down on the 38T line. So I believe it was built by the Czechs as well. Grill Alst M, three centimeter. This thing's a beast. 65 pull armor, ignore that. 20 pop cap, 420 manpower. Has an 80 round magazine on this thing. Three centimeter auto cannon. Way ahead of its time. I think there was two built in the entire war or something. Fantastic. Kills infantry, kills light armor, kills aircraft. Love it. The only bad thing is it's a forward mounted gun. Isn't on a turret. If that was turret mounted, it'd be awesome, but still very good. Like it. Great support vehicle. Stug 3 hours dev, 35 manpower, 585, uh, 35 pop cap, 585 manpower. This is where the Stug gets the L43, 137mm pen. Still, the armor has not been upgraded on this, and it doesn't have an MG. So I'm not a big fan of the house dev. Go straight if you can, got the points. Stug 3 to the house duty early, 35 pop cap, but 625 manpower. 10 to 80 armor. It's got 139 mils pen, and it has an MG on that. It is basically a pinto mounted, or turret mounted, but it has a nice little gun shield for the crew. Fantastic vehicle, really like that. And then the House G Late is 35 pop cap, 654. Comes with a coaxial gun and a remote control one, which is fantastic. Whereas this, I don't believe, does it come with a coaxial? No, it doesn't come with a coaxial. This thing is fantastic. Definitely the best of the Stoogies, and obviously you still get those side skirts, which is great. And it's had a redesigned Commander's Capula. Fantastic. 654, 45 manpower, but it's not bad at all. The Stu 42, the house cheap, is 35 pop cap, 735 manpower. This thing comes with a 10.5 centimeter gun. It's basically a self propelled gun. It's fantastic. Great support vehicle. Comes with high explosive and heat rounds. Good rate of fire. Yep, I like the Stu 42. A great fire they've come with. But 70, 75 manpower. Very expensive. Now on the Jag Panzers. Now, these are 35 pop and 605 munitions at manpower. 35 pop cap and 605 manpower. Has the L48 135 9mm pen. It's not that good. 28E full armor. The first variant's not any good, more good than the Panzer IV. Any better, should I say, anti tank. Don't really like the first variant. But if you can get things like the Jake Panzer IV with 40 pop cap, 805 manpower, this thing has the L48 139. Also, not that good. Comes with an MG, whereas the first one, I believe, also does MG42. Comes with side skirts and 20 to 100 armor. A bit more armor, but still not that good. What's the point? This is where it shines. 45 pop cap is the Panzer IV. It's the 4 over 70. It's got a V on it, though. The fifth variant, I guess. 1,125 manpower. It comes with the L70. 190 mils pen. Same as a Panther. This is where this thing shines. But you just bring a Panther, in my opinion. But it's quite hard to kill from the front, but still, it will take out absolutely any tank. It's a beast. But just bring a Panther, in my opinion. Stone Panzer 1, 35 pop cap, 775 munitions. It's a SIG on wheels or on tracks. It's decent. It's easy to kill. Mm, it's alright if you want some mobile firepower. It's very easy to get to, as you can see here. here straight after the Panzer Jaeger one. But yeah, only bring it if you haven't got much mobility. Next, you have the Stug 33. This has the 15 centimeter in, but in a 20 to 80 hull armor rolling box. It's fantastic. 40 pop cap, 1010 manpower. I've used these in my campaigns. They're fantastic. They're quite hard to kill. These, these come with around 30 odd rounds. Fantastic. It's a win. And that is in the Stugi line. It's a bit of an odd spot just here on the Stugi line. Definitely a win. Next, you have the West, 30 manpower, 980, 30 pop cap, 980 manpower. It's got a 10.5 centimeter gun, rapid, pretty fast firing, efficient, decent range. Two of these are fantastic. The West is a thumbs up, great self powered gun. Next, the grill, 15 centimeter, 40 pop cap, 1025 manpower. Also great, like the West, 15 centimeter SIG basically, but self propelled. Really like these. That and the West are both fantastic. They complement each other well. Definitely worth using. Hummel, 45 pop cap, 1380. This thing's armed with a 15 centimeter long barrel variant. I'm not a big fan of the Hummel personally. I think you don't really need it. It's a bit, yeah, I personally prefer the Grill of the West, but still decent. Gives you some self propelled long range firepower. Just remember, like the other ones, it's a self propelled gun. The actual armor might be quite tough, uh, up to 30, but the actual turret armor there is about 8 or 10 mils, so it's quite open topped and vulnerable. So just be aware of that. Stern Panzer 4, 45 pop cap, 1080 manpower. It's 10 to 100 armor. It's basically like the stump, like the Brumbar, the Stu 33. It's good. We have a 15 centimeter main gun. Kill any tank with the high explosives. Great. And it's in the Panzer IV tree. Just, just there. So, yeah, great support vehicle. Really like that. Definitely worth buying. Next up, the Nash Horn. Love it. 45 pop cap, 1330 manpower. Has the same gun as the King Tiger. This thing's a beast. It is, I believe, where is it on the weapon system tree? Nash Horn's in a bit of a weird spot, if I remember correctly. Nash Horn's just before above the anti tank gun, so you can get to it quite quickly. This thing is a beast slayer, but 10 to 30 hull armor and open topped. It can't survive much, but it can dish out a lot of pain. It's a glass cannon. Love the Nash Horn, so thumbs up. 
Next, you have the Ferdinand. Same gun as the King Tiger in the National. 10 to 200 armor. No MGs to support, but this thing's a beast. Set this up. Very good. Um, obviously known as the Elephant, I believe. Was used in the Battle of Curse. They're actually really good tank destroyers, but that's what it is. Needs to be supported by infantry or some anti-infantry force. But really good. Like the Ferdinand. Obviously, too heavy in real life to be ineffective and too mechanically unreliable, but really good tank. Definitely a win. Next, you have the Jagged Panther, 8.8 centimeter main gun. Same gun as the King Tiger, 10 to 80 armor. Love this thing. All the good things of a Panther, but with a bigger gun. 55 pop cap, though, 1,430 manpower. Obviously, the Elephant was 55 pop, 1,530. Go for the Jagged Panther. Better, more efficient, and cooler. It's fantastic. Next, you have the Jag Tiger. I've seen this in real life. It's insane. 60 pop cap, 1,780 manpower, 128 millimeter. So 12.8 centimeter pack, 44. 271 mils men pen, also massively high explosive shells. Comes with a coaxial machine gun and a pintle mounted rear one. It's overkill. This is for killing the things like your IS-2s and your Sherman Jumbos. This thing will kill anything it hits, basically. It's very powerful, but slow reloading, slow moving. Hull armor is 25 to 250. Heaviest armored tank in the game, I believe. Absolute beast. You cannot go wrong with the Jag T. I love it, but very expensive. If you lose it, you're going to feel it. But glorious thing. If they'd actually worked well in real life, they could have been deadly, but mechanically unreliable. And last but not least, the Sturm Mose are all known as the Sturm Tiger. Obviously, 40 to 150 Hull armor. It has additional armor 110. Now, this is a weird thing. 60 pop cap, 1,730 manpower. It's armed with a 38 centimeter Raketten Werfer. So it's a 38 centimeter shell that fires out. It's a monster. But that only has one mils pen. So it can occasionally bounce far away. If that hits anything, though, and detonates, it can kill any tank, any infantry, anything in the game. Fantastic mobile support vehicle. Takes about a minute in game to reload. In real life, it took about an hour. I just can see the little crane. Fantastic support vehicle. It's really down far at the tree, though. Right there, the Stern Mauser. Great support thing for your Tiger Regiments. And that is it. That is the German Army reviewed. I've shown you the cost and the pop cap. Um, I've told you what I thought good, what was thought was bad. I just wanted to kind of give you an intro. We haven't done these for a long time. Obviously, tell me what you think about things. It was probably a little bit rushed, I guess, because I just wanted to get through everything. But obviously, I have videos that actually go in depth on tanks and all the different vehicles in the game in the um, tutorial guide. But you now know the population cap and the manpower cost of all these various vehicles. I'll break them down to tank sections and stuff if I can. A little bit more efficient. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. I've done this at the request of a guy who actually asked for it. So if you've watched all the way, thank you very much. We'll also be doing the Russians, the Finns, and the Americanas, and whoever else comes out. Thanks for watching, everyone, and you guys have a fantastic evening.